1938, the Chicago Cubs won the pennant on Gabby Hartnett's famous home run hit as darkness fell on Wrigley Field. The Cubs' World Series hopes rested on the sore arm of Dizzy Dean, acquired from the Cardinals. The Cubs' opponents were the Yankees, and in the second game of the series, Old Diz struggled bravely to hold the New Yorkers back. But Frank Rossetti hit an eighth-inning homer, and New York went on to sweep the series in four games. The Yankees were stronger than ever in the 30s, but two of their greats were passing from the game. In 1935, Babe Ruth joined the Boston Braves, and it was with them that he hit his 714th and final home run. And in 1939, the Iron Horse, Lou Gehrig, was stricken with a form of polio. Even with the knowledge of his fatal disease, the Yankee captain expressed his gratitude to an overflow Yankee Stadium crowd. I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. He was uh, Mr. Baseball, and uh, he did so many things that, for baseball in all the years that he played, and I, I hope a lot of them, I know a lot of the players playing today appreciate what he did and kept baseball going. And it, it, It's just been a wonderful thing and for me to say that I played with Babe, and also Gehrig, or all of his fellows. Yes, sir. Babe was one that always came to accept the challenge and, and, and uh, was the star of whatever performance. If you look back on the World Series records, when Ford pitched the scoreless innings, it was Babe Ruth's record when Ruth was a pitcher that he broke. Mantle scored, uh, stole more bases than anybody in the World Series. It was Ruth's record. And Mantle hit more home runs than, than Ruth in the World Series, and it was Ruth's record. So Ruth was really a, the most dynamic personality in the history of baseball. Can he be compared to the home run hitters of today, or is there no comparison? You can compare them with any era. I would anyhow, and I've seen a lot of them. I thought Williams was probably a better hitter, but not a better home run hitter. On that day, Lou Gehrig considered himself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. And most Yankees who came in and out of the Yankee clubhouse during the course of the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and yes, even the 1980s, considered themselves very lucky to know the man who ran the clubhouse, Pete Sheehy, a clubhouse that was later to be named the Pete Sheehy Clubhouse. In 1985, Pete Sheehy passed away after 59 years of riding herd over that.